Hello Football! Today we have made for you a collection of the top 7 father's sons, the sons of great football players from the past. Who are they? Where do they play now? In what ways are they better or worse than their fathers? And much more. So is it like father like son? In the seventh place we have Justin Kluivert, the son of the famous Patrick Kluivert. Justin's father became famous for his playing for Ajax, where he spent his best years taking the Champions League and scored the only goal in the final. Then there was a disastrous season in Milano, and a little later the Patrick Lubert's career was resurrected by the great Louis van Gaal, who invented him to play for Barca. As part of the Catalans, Kluivert the senior consistently scored goals for some more years until he left the team in 2004. Then he played for Newcastle and for Valencia and PSV and Lille, but his injuries didn't allow him to show a bright game again. One way or another, he is definitely a legend. All four of Patrick's sons came to football. Two of them play in the Netherlands in the position of defenders, and so far they haven't been able to show themselves brightly. But the middle son from Patrick's first marriage, Justin Klubert, has already managed to establish himself at the highest level. Like father, like son, Justin began his career in Ajax and made his debut for the main team when he was even younger than his father at his start. And in the first full season, Justin scored 10 goals and made 5 assists, after which he decided to develop a career in other European top teams. At first we saw him in Roma, where he was kindly invented to by the great Francesco Totti. He seemed to perform here brightly, but definitely not stable. After that, Justin came to RB Leipzig, but here he also failed to become a star. Serious competition was added here, other players were more suited the coach, and it was not even possible for Justin to make breakthrough into the starting lineup. And finally, this season, Justin decided to join the ambitious project of the football club Nice. Here he is one of the main players, he played 11 matches and he has already marked himself with 5 goal scoring actions. It makes no sense to compare father and son, because they are radically different in style of play. Patrick was an outstanding bombardier, while Justin is more of a flanking player, and their performance is always lower than that of the forwards in penalty area. In the sixth place we have Giovanni Simeone, the son of Diego Simeone. To begin with, let's refresh our memory a little and remember the football way of Simeone the senior. For many people he was remembered only for his antics on the field and aggressive play, which was considered his feature, but this is only part of his game. Don't forget that he was not just a bouncer, but also an incredibly smart midfield player. Playing for Atletico in the 95-96 season, he not only concreted the support zone, but also joined the attack on time, scoring 12 goals in the season. Later there was a segment of Diego Simeone's career at Inter, and with this team he took the UEFA Cup. Then there was Lazio, and here again he was a key player and helped the team to take the golden double. All in all, he was an outstanding warrior and player for any team. And as for Giovanni Simeone, he started his career in Argentine clubs, where he spent several years, but they really started talking about this player after his move to Europe, when in his first season he scored 12 goals in Serie A for the humble Genoa. Later Fiorentina buys him three times more expensive and now he was scored 14 goals in a season. Then for a while the player disappeared from sight, but now we're amazed on his influence on Modest Verona. Here in 19 matches this season he has already scored 12 goals. And again there's no point to compare father and son, because their positions on the field are different. One is the player in the center of the field, and another one is the forward, and even more so we will not not compare their greatness, because Diego can be considered a legend, and Giovanni's way just begun. In fifth place we have Marco Salonso, the son of another Marco Salonso, and grandson of another Marco Salonso. Yes, there's a rich history of the Alonso family. By the way, this is the first football family in which the players of three generations in a row made their way to the main Spanish national team. 
Alonso's grandfather played on the defensive and the brightest step on his career was playing for Real. Here he became the champion of Spain five times and took the Champions Cup the same number of times. Alonso's father played in attack and became famous primarily for his performances for Atletico and Barcelona. It was with the Catalan team that he won La Liga and the Spanish Cup and the Spanish Super Cup and the UEFA Champions Cup. And well, our hero, Marcos Alonso from Chelsea, was brought up in the Real Madrid Academy. Here he played for the youth squad and he even played in the main team, but only for a couple of minutes. Unable to withstand the competition, he went to Bolton, then he went up for promotion in Fiorentina, and after that he was on loan in Sunderland, and then he returned to Fiorentina, and only then he ended up in Chelsea. If you try to compare all the three of the Alonso family with each other, then our Marcus is not much inferior to his father in achievements. He has won the Premier League, and FA Cup, and Champions League, and Europe League, and UEFA Super Cup, but both of younger Alonsos are far from their grandfather, for he was a real legend of Spanish football. In fourth place we have Federico Chiesa, the son of the legendary Italian forward Enrico Chiesa, who spent his entire career in Serie A. First, Chiesa the senior showed himself in Sampdoria, then he went to Parma and Parma was one of the best teams in Europe at that time. There he played for several seasons and won the Italian Cup and the UEFA Cup. By the way, at that tournament he became the top bombardier. His next step was Fiorentina that fought for the first places in Serie A and here Chiesa already became a real favorite of the public. At the same time, Fiorentina was on the verge of bankruptcy, but Enrico was staying with his team until the very end. Plus, after moving to Siena, he became the captain there and played for another five years. But Federico Chiesa began his career in the very Fiorentina and he was also the main star of the team. But note, if the father was loved for his goals, then the son was loved for dedication and efficiency. After spending four full seasons for his home team, Federico went on promotion to Juventus, where he had already won the Italian Cup and Super Cup and he won the Euro with the national team and he was included into the symbolic team of the tournament. And if Federico continues in the same vein, then he will become no less legendary than his father over time. The main thing is that he was fewer injuries in future. In third place we have Kasper Schmichel, the son of the legendary Peter Schmichel. Everyone knows very well all about his father. He spent 10 years in the Danish league and in 1991 he was invited by Sir Alex Ferguson to Manchester United. For 8 years he won the Premier League 5 times and the FA Cup 3 times and the England Super Cup 4 times and the Champions League and the European Super Cup and also he won the European Championship with Denmark team in 1992. After that he moved to Sporting, took a couple of trophies there and met his retirement in Aston Villa and in Manchester City. And the most interesting thing is that it was here in Manchester City that his son Kasper's career began. The only pity that it was unsuccessful. But later, when Kasper was running on leases, he found his team. We are of course talking about Leicester City. With them he won the championship and subsequently took the Premier League championship in 2016. You all know this marvelous story of Leicester very well. Of course, if you compare the titles, then the father will be ahead of the son. But even if Kasper has only one Premier League trophy, so what? Look how historical it is. And by the way, he also took the FA Cup and the FA Super Cup with Leicester. In second place we have Erling Holland, son of Alf Inge Holland. Erling father is known not for his legendariness or for his trophies, but rather for his conflict with Roy Keane. Their confrontation reached the point that Keane flew a straight leg into Holland's knee and after that his career began to decline. He can also be said to have played a defensive midfielder for Nottingham Forest and Leeds United and Manchester City, but he had no significant career achievements here. 
But Erling Haaland, on the contrary, one might say, has already surpassed his father in legendariness. He showed his first successes in RB Salzburg, and the whole world learned about him in just one season. If usually for the attackers everyone counted the number of goals scored, then for Erling everyone counted the number of hat tricks. That's how brightly he burst into modern football. Later he was bought by Borussia Dortmund, and here Erling became the leader of the team in two years. Moreover, he is now one of the most effective bombardiers in the world. The player is only 21 years old, and his striking achievements are compared to Benzema, Lewandowski and Mohamed Salah. Yes, there are not many trophies yet, only the Austrian Cup and the Austrian Championship and the German Cup, but there are many personal awards, so in the end we can say that Erling has already eclipsed his father. In the first place, we have Thiago Alcantara, the son of the famous Brazilian midfielder Mazinho, who was the world champion in 1994. Thiago's father spent about 10 years in Brazilian teams and took all the trophies here, but he failed to play successfully in Europe. He played for Lecce and Fiorentino and Valencia and Celta and Delce, but he didn't find much success anywhere. But as for Thiago, he can already be said to outshine his father both with individual level and by means of team trophies. He began his way in Barcelona, where he was an important player for Pep Guardiola. Here he took the championship four times, and he took several cups and super cups in Spain, and the Champions League and the UEFA Super Cup and the Club World Cup. And then he went to Bavaria after Pep Guardiola, where he continued to collect trophies, and then he became a full-fledged player of the main team. There are as many as 18 trophies, we won't list them all. Now Thiago Alcantara plays for Liverpool, and here he is also the most important member of Jurgen Klopp's main team. So he surpasses his father both in the number of trophies and in the level of individual skill. So, my friends, that's how the final list looks like. If you have your own visions for who was worth mentioning in this issue, write in the comments. He was Gennaro Gattuso. See you. Bye.